Well, this is Dr. Rubenstein, and we are in search of the Fear Park Demon. And uh, it's one of those interesting ones. We've got a camera in the back of the car. I'm going to close this up. And then uh, see what we can see. We are going to uh, take a walk. <clears throat> now, the Fair Park Demon is something that is one of the typical type stories that you hear about. Um, kids parked in a car, something jumps on the back. It's. Uh, Scares, scares them, of course. Next day, there's scratches or something on the back. And so it jumps up on the back of the car. So that's why I have the camera in the back of the car, and the car's over there. And there's other people parking here already. <clears throat> the story goes back to when they had cars. We're not sure what else... Could have been out here at one time. The Mohicans had a a being that they talked about here. Yeah, uh, it was called Yaqua Weedak, and uh, kind of like Bigfoot, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. And um, in any case, it would come up and jump on their car or th th that would jump on the car. The Mohicans had this story, kind of like a Bigfoot, I guess. And uh, they talked about it. So in any case, we're out here tonight. And in front of me is Bradley Lake. Up there, those lights are Arcadia Pavilion. The parking lot's here. It's been here quite a while. So we're just going to put the camera, as I said, the camera's in the back of the car. We're just going to see exactly what we find. So far, no one's attacked us yet. Nothing's out here. Um, I will include um, right now a bunch of uh, videos of the area. You can, you'll be able to see how wooded it really is. And so, uh, and maybe a few maps. So we'll take a look at those now. And uh, I'll come back to you. So this is a view of the parking lot. That's, as I said before, has been here since probably the 20s. The pavilion's up there behind those trees. And then we have a big wooded area here. So again, not impossible for something large to be around here. Now here's another view of the parking lot. Here's just standing up there. But again, all wooded. Very possible. Again, you can. Again, you can see how forested and, and wooded this area is. It would not be impossible for something to be in here. Here's yet another part of Fair Park. And as you can see, some of these trees, that is an old oak tree. And there's a number of them in a row. Again, a lot of this has been untouched. So who knows? Who knows? 
this is some of the area this is some of the area um, on the other side of the, the water and the the parked car is right over there this is, this is big here but it certainly there's a stream up there and I will include a video on this trail that's down at the bottom uh, in the description but in any case this gives you an idea of just exactly what the type of woods is as I was walking in here I spooked a deer so the idea that large animals couldn't live in this area is uh, I think false this is another area of the park this is another area of the park right here and you can kind of see the fairway through the trees so it's it's not like it's 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 all enclosed or all wooded but certainly you can see how a lot of it is wooded so this is just another example of what I'm talking about as we explore the park here again for the denseness of the of the woods here is an old growth oak and again it's possible anything could actually live in here um, deer especially we see deer quite a bit so you can see from those those videos I showed you already there is quite a few areas in the park but something big could uh, could be here Arcadia Pavilion that's been here <coughs> for quite some time <coughs> I know you can't see much right now and I don't know if anything's going to jump on the back of my car but as I say, I have the camera going. So far, I haven't seen anything like a large primate or anything of that nature. Walking up to the Arcadia Pavilion. If you look in the playlist for Troy, I did a, a little something on the Arcadia Pavilion. That noise you hear is the Bradley Lake emptying into White Lake through a big pipe, and there is a video of that also. I'm going to turn off the camera for a few minutes, and uh, we will listen to a little broadcast from WAMC where they talked about, interviewed some people about the Freer Park Demon. <coughs> Pardon me. So with that, I'll go through the many mm, hours, the time that the camera is on in the back of the car while you're listening to it and find whatever I can find that is the most interesting. And then uh, we'll cut back just before we leave. As I say, I'm out here in the dark and uh, nothing yet.
Tell us if this scene sounds familiar. A young couple sits in a parked car on Lover's Lane. It is a beautiful starry night. They're on a date, and they are sitting anxiously side by side in the front seat. Each is waiting for the other to make a move. Finally, one gets a shot of courage and goes for it. Things are starting to heat up, and then something large lands on the hood of the car. Startled, the couple is only able to catch a glimpse of whatever it was before it disappears into the night. Not willing to let it go, one of them gets out of the car to investigate. Horror ensues. Are the lights on? Good. Welcome to Listen with the Lights On. I'm Jessica Blaustein Marshall. And I'm Patrick Garrett. You know that urban legend about the couple who goes parking, right? We talked to the original Albany Ghost Tour leaders Maeve McEnany and Paul Nooney about a local version of this trope and its significance in pop culture. So, the Freer Park Demon, what's going on? <laughs> uh, Freer Park Demon is a story uh, for Troy that warns, I would say, young lovers against the dangers of parking. And the story goes is that two lovers went to Freer Park to go quote, stargazing, mm -hmm. and while they're there, all of a sudden, a weight just drops on the hood of the car, like bang, and they're startled, and all of a sudden, the nails, they scratch all the way down the, the top of the car, ear piercing, piercing, screech, and then this figure of something rolls down the hood of the car, leaps, and it's some kind of humanoid creature with glittering nails runs out and into the tree line. And the man, you know, they're both shook and he kind of trembling opens his door and he steps out and all along the hood of his car are these deep white scratch marks that are bigger than what any man could do, but certainly not like a bear or anything. They're huge and deep. But that's what everybody seems to think. They say, well, it must have been an animal. But remember, the creature that scurried off into the woods was sort of humanoid with these long arms and legs. So this is, I think, Troy's version of Bigfoot. <laughs> so the combination of the Bigfoot myth has blended with the stories of Lover's Lane and the dangers of Lover's Lane. So Bigfoot, that's kind of a far cry from a demon. Why well, call it a demon? Because Bigfoot is silly. Well, and I think a lot of it, too, again, there is a lot of theory that some of these urban legends were made up, kind of like Maeve said, to prevent people from doing stuff. So if you said, oh, don't go in, don't go, go parking, someone with a big feet is going to come and trample on your car, the demon is going to come and trample your car, you know, it has much more of an impact, yeah? yeah. That yeah. is much scarier. That legend takes place somewhere in Freer Park, I don't know if you've ever been to Freer Park, but it's a very, it's a golf course, and it's very hilly, and, but there are wooded areas, and people apparently go parking there. Have you ever seen it? No. I've never gone out that far to Freer Park. This Albany girl <laughs> to get me to go to Freer Park at night. Just, you gotta pay me a lot of money to do that. <laughs> Could it possibly have just been like a lover's quarrel? Perhaps. Maybe the the other girl <laughs> jumping, <laughs> jumping on the hood, on the of, the hood car. of the car and scratching down the top. It could have been. <laughs> but you hear stories very similar to that in other places, so I guess it's our version because the traditional story that's anti-Lover's Lane is the man who escapes from the mental institution. So, you know, and that's, I think we talked a little bit about, you know, the man with the hook and you know, that's an urban legend that goes all across our country. So the Troy spin on it is not so much that it's a man from the mental institution, but in fact we have a full-on demon. Mm -hmm. I, it's an urban legend, obviously we don't have the historical fact behind it, but have you been able to like trace where it started here in Troy? Not this one, no. This is no. one that we've told. It's a story that I love to tell though because a lot of times we get teenagers and young people on the tours and that's a story that resonates with them. So some of our uh, older clients, you know, they like a lot of the history and they like being able to trace it back and they like when we break down the urban legends. But Freer Park Demon is one we tell specifically for the teenagers because it's simple in its origin and it's something you can easily take back to your next campfire. Mm -hmm. Do people even go parking anymore? Is that a thing? I, I'm I out of it. <laughs> yeah, nobody's making eye contact right now. So. I'll, I'll be honest, no, I don't think so. I've never heard of it. <laughs> they go sit in their cars and just text each other. Right. <laughs> Sending you a video from the back of the car. <laughs> oh, scandal. It came from inside the car. <laughs> 
we like to keep with some of those urban legends because those are the ones you give them the core and they get passed on and passed on and maybe when our children are giving ghost tours uh, they'll be telling some version of that little core yeah. with more of those embellishments don't text and drive this is what happens you know what though it really could have been something that simple though of like, like squirrel squirrels or, or something scratching on the hood of your car and or or an ex-girlfriend i mean if, it, if again okay. not to not to go back to the 80s but things seem to be pointing there for me in, in my interpretation of this but they had long like press-on nails <laughs> right, right? <laughs> i couldn't remember the lee press-ons the the lee lee press press yes. scratching on the hood of your car hey somebody spying on somebody in the tree above them falls, falls out hits the, the trunk and, <laughs> and then runs and away <laughs> There's a creature, I'll have to look it up, that when we tell the story that the teenagers equate it to, um, have, it's not the White Walker, I'll have to put it up, but they, I've had two different groups that they pull up and there's a meme going around, and it's of this creature with lanky arms and legs, and so when I tell that story... Slenderman? It's not Slenderman, it's, but it's of the same group of it and my Same ilk. But when I tell that story, they immediately pull out their phones, we've had a couple do it, mm -hmm. and they show me this creature and they're like, Yeah, it's that. That's what you're talking about. So they're already taking Free Your Park Demon and they're equating it to memes. <laughs> so memes are almost like the new urban legend. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the Free Your Park Demon? Or something like it? Tell us about your encounter. Email us at lightson at WAMC .org. Thanks for joining us. Listen with the Lights On is a production of WAMC. Our theme music is Grizzly Reminder by Midnight Syndicate. For more spine-tingling tales, check out our podcast or head over to WAMC.org. Well, we didn't find the uh, Fear Park Demon tonight, but uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the look and the search and the story. So with that, please subscribe, ring the bell, hit the like button, and uh, thank you for mu very much for listening. And who knows, maybe you'll see the Fear Park Demon one night when you're out there. Bye-bye.